June 20. Amaziah rules in Judah. Amaziah, son of Joash, began to rule over Judah in the second year of the reign of King Jehoash of Israel. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother was Jehoadan from Jerusalem. Amaziah did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, but not like his ancestor David. Instead, he followed the example of his father, Joash. Amaziah did not destroy the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. When Amaziah was well established as king, he executed the officials who had assassinated his father. However, he did not kill the children of the assassins, for he obeyed the command of the Lord as written by Moses in the book of the law. Parents must not be put to death for the sins of their children, nor children for the sins of their parents. Those deserving to die must be put to death for their own crimes. Amaziah also killed 10,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He also conquered Selah and changed its name to Jokthiel, as it is called to this day. One day Amaziah sent messengers with this challenge to Israel's king Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz and grandson of Jehu. Come and meet me in battle. But King Jehoash of Israel replied to King Amaziah of Judah with this story. Out in the Lebanon mountains, a thistle sent a message to a mighty cedar tree. Give your daughter in marriage to my son. But just then, a wild animal of Lebanon came by and stepped on the thistle, crushing it. You have indeed defeated Edom, and you are very proud of it, but be content with your victory and stay at home. Why stir up trouble that will only bring disaster on you and the people of Judah? But Amaziah refused to listen. So King Jehoash of Israel mobilized his army against King Amaziah of Judah. The two armies drew up their battle lines at Beth Shemesh in Judah. Judah was routed by the army of Israel, and its army scattered and fled for home. King Jehoash of Israel captured Judah's king, Amaziah, son of Joash, and grandson of Ahaziah, at Beth Shemesh. Then he marched to Jerusalem, where he demolished 600 feet of Jerusalem's wall, from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. He carried off all the gold and silver and all the articles from the temple of the Lord. He also seized the treasures from the royal palace, along with hostages, and then returned to Samaria. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother was Jehoadan from Jerusalem. Amaziah did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, but not wholeheartedly. When Amaziah was well established as king, he executed the officials who had assassinated his father. However, he did not kill the children of the assassins, for he obeyed the command of the Lord as written by Moses in the book of the law. Parents must not be put to death for the sins of their children, nor children for the sins of their parents. Those deserving to die must be put to death for their own crimes. Then Amaziah organized the army, assigning generals and captains for all Judah and Benjamin. He took a census and found that he had an army of 300,000 select troops, 20 years old and older, all trained in the use of spear and shield. He also paid about 7,500 pounds of silver to hire 100,000 experienced fighting men from Israel. But a man of God came to him and said, Your Majesty, Do not hire troops from Israel, for the Lord is not with Israel. He will not help those people of Ephraim. If you let them go with your troops into battle, you will be defeated by the enemy no matter how well you fight. God will overthrow you, for he has the power to help you or to trip you up. Amaziah asked the man of God, But what about all that silver I paid to hire the army of Israel? The man of God replied, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. So Amaziah discharged the hired troops and sent them back to Ephraim. This made them very angry with Judah, and they returned home in a great rage. Then Amaziah summoned his courage and led his army to the Valley of Salt, where they killed 10,000 Edomite troops from Seir. They captured another 10,000 and took them to the top of a cliff and threw them off, dashing them to pieces on the rocks below. Meanwhile, the hired troops that Amaziah had sent home raided several of the towns of Judah between Samaria and Beth Horon. They killed 3,000 people and carried off great quantities of plunder. When King Amaziah returned from slaughtering the Edomites, he brought with him idols taken from the people of Seir. He set them up as his own gods, bowed down in front of them, and offered sacrifices to them. 
This made the Lord very angry, and he sent a prophet to ask, Why do you turn to gods who could not even save their own people from you? But the king interrupted him and said, Since when have I made you the king's counselor? Be quiet now before I have you killed. So the prophet stopped with this warning. I know that God has determined to destroy you because you have done this and have refused to accept my counsel. After consulting with his advisors, King Amaziah of Judah sent this challenge to Israel's king Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, and grandson of Jehu. Come and meet me in battle. But King Jehoash of Israel replied to King Amaziah of Judah with this story. Out in the Lebanon mountains, a thistle sent a message to a mighty cedar tree, Give your daughter in marriage to my son. But just then, a wild animal of Lebanon came by and stepped on the thistle, crushing it. You were saying, I have defeated Edom, and you are very proud of it. But my advice is to stay at home. Why stir up trouble that will only bring disaster on you and the people of Judah? But Amaziah refused to listen, for God was determined to destroy him for turning to the gods of Edom. So King Jehoash of Israel mobilized his army against King Amaziah of Judah. The two armies drew up their battle lines at Beth Shemesh in Judah. Judah was routed by the army of Israel, and its army scattered and fled for home. King Jehoash of Israel captured Judah's king, Amaziah, son of Joash, and grandson of Ahaziah at Beth Shemesh. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, where he demolished 600 feet of Jerusalem's wall, from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. He carried off all the gold and silver and all the articles from the temple of God that had been in the care of Obed-Edom. He also seized the treasures of the royal palace, along with hostages, and then returned to Samaria. The rest of the events in Jehoash's reign and everything he did, including the extent of his power and his war with King Amaziah of Judah, are recorded in the Book of the History of the Kings of Israel. When Jehoash died, he was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Then his son Jeroboam II became the next king. From Second Kings The rest of the events in Jehoash's reign and everything he did, including the extent of his power and his war with King Amaziah of Judah, are recorded in the Book of the History of the Kings of Israel. When Jehoash died, he was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel, and his son Jeroboam II became the next king. Jeroboam II rules in Israel. Jeroboam II, the son of Jehoash, began to rule over Israel in the fifteenth year of King Amaziah's reign in Judah. Jeroboam reigned in Samaria forty-one years. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had led Israel to commit. Jeroboam II recovered the territories of Israel between Lebohamoth and the Dead Sea, just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had promised through Jonah, son of Amittai, the prophet from gath Hefer. For the Lord saw the bitter suffering of everyone in Israel, and that there was no one in Israel slave or free to help them. And because the Lord had not said he would blot out the name of Israel completely, he used Jeroboam II, the son of Jehoash, to save them. From Second Chronicles End of Amaziah's Reign King Amaziah of Judah lived on for fifteen years after the death of King Jehoash of Israel. The rest of the events in Amaziah's reign, from beginning to end, are recorded in the Book of the Kings of Judah and Israel. After Amaziah turned away from the Lord, there was a conspiracy against his life in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But his enemies sent assassins after him, and they killed him there. They brought his body back on a horse, and he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. From Second Kings King Amaziah of Judah lived for fifteen years after the death of King Jehoash of Israel. The rest of the events in Amaziah's reign are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. There was a conspiracy against Amaziah's life in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But his enemies sent assassins after him, and they killed him there. They brought his body back to Jerusalem on a horse, and he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. All the people of Judah had crowned Amaziah's sixteen-year-old son Uzziah as king in place of his father Amaziah. After his father's death, Uzziah rebuilt the town of Elith and restored it to Judah. Uzziah Rules in Judah Uzziah, son of Amaziah, began to rule over Judah in the twenty-seventh year of the reign of King Jeroboam II of Israel. 
He was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother was Jechaliah from Jerusalem. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his father Amaziah had done. But he did not destroy the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. The Lord struck the king with leprosy, which lasted until the day he died. He lived in isolation in a separate house. The king's son Jotham was put in charge of the royal palace, and he governed the people of the land. From Second Chronicles All the people of Judah had crowned Amaziah's sixteen-year-old son Uzziah as king in place of his father. After his father's death, Uzziah rebuilt the town of Elath and restored it to Judah. Isaiah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother was Jechaliah from Jerusalem. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his father Amaziah had done. Uzziah sought God during the days of Zechariah, who taught him to fear God. And as long as the king sought guidance from the Lord, God gave him success. Isaiah declared war on the Philistines and broke down the walls of Gath, Jebna, and Ashdod. Then he built new towns in the Ashdod area and in other parts of Philistia. God helped him in his wars against the Philistines, his battles with the Arabs of Gur, and his wars with the Meunites. The Meunites paid annual tribute to him, and his fame spread even to Egypt, for he had become very powerful. Uzziah built fortified towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at the angle in the wall. He also constructed forts in the wilderness and dug many water cisterns because he kept great herds of livestock in the foothills of Judah and on the plains. He was also a man who loved the soil. He had many workers who cared for his farms and vineyards both on the hillsides and in the fertile valleys. Isaiah had an army of well-trained warriors ready to march into battle unit by unit. This army had been mustered and organized by Geil, the secretary of the army, and his assistant, Maaseah. They were under the direction of Hananiah, one of the king's officials. These regiments of mighty warriors were commanded by 2,600 clan leaders. The army consisted of 307,500 men, all elite troops. They were prepared to assist the king against any enemy. Isaiah provided the entire army with shields, spears, helmets, coats of mail, bows, and sling stones. And he built structures on the walls of Jerusalem, designed by experts, to protect those who shot arrows and hurled large stones from the towers and the corners of the wall. His fame spread far and wide, for the Lord gave him marvelous help, and he became very powerful. Isaiah's Sin and Punishment But when he had become powerful, he also became proud, which led to his downfall. He sinned against the Lord his God by entering the sanctuary of the Lord's temple and personally burning incense on the incense altar. Azariah the high priest went in after him with eighty other priests of the Lord, all brave men. They confronted King Isaiah and said, It is not for you, Isaiah, to burn incense to the Lord. That is the work of the priests alone, the descendants of Aaron, who are set apart for this work. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have sinned. The Lord God will not honor you for this. Isaiah, who was holding an incense burner, became furious. But as he was standing there raging at the priests before the incense altar in the Lord's temple, leprosy suddenly broke out on his forehead. When Azariah the high priest and all the other priests saw the leprosy, they rushed him out. And the king himself was eager to get out because the Lord had struck him. So King Isaiah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in isolation in a separate house, for he was excluded from the temple of the Lord. His son Jotham was put in charge of the royal palace, and he governed the people of the land. Jonah runs from the Lord. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it, because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. 
But all this time Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? he shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused the terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us? they demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? they groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, What should we do to you to stop this storm? Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know that this terrible storm is all my fault. Instead, the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to the land, but the stormy sea was too violent for them, and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God, O Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death. O Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. Then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Jonah's Prayer Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. He said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me, I called to you from the land of the dead, and, Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, O Lord, you have driven me from your presence, yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. I sank beneath the waves, and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth, whose gates lock shut forever. But you, O Lord my God, snatched me from the jaws of death. As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord, and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. Those who worship false gods turn their backs on all God's mercies. But I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise, and I will fulfill all my vows, for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Then the Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah out onto the beach. Jonah goes to Nineveh. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time, Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh, and deliver the message I have given you. This time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks, may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. Jonah's Anger at the Lord's Mercy This change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. 
The Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry about this? Then Jonah went out to the east side of the city and made a shelter to sit under as he waited to see what would happen to the city. And the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow there, and soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head, shading him from the sun. This eased his discomfort, and Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But God also arranged for a worm. The next morning at dawn, the worm ate through the stem of the plant so that it withered away. And as the sun grew hot, God arranged for a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah. The sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and wished to die. Death is certainly better than living like this, he exclaimed. Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah retorted, even angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly and died quickly. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city?